Today I want to make a video on physics resources. Physics is usually confusing and really difficult for beginners. So we kind of have this little bit of a challenge uh, for us. So the main question is, how can physics be less confusing and more fun? There's some riddles in the universe for us. Uh, the problem is that the library is really dull and lifeless. Uh, physics textbooks tend to be pretty, uh, pretty boring. And in the laboratory, it's really confusing. And these gadgets, we have no idea what they do, how to put them together, and it's somewhat dangerous, and we feel kind of, uh, we don't know what we're doing. And in the lounge, nobody even cares. Like, <laughs> nobody really knows, uh, you know, we don't really talk about physics too much, and it's not, um, it's not really a popular topic. And so, uh, well, these are some challenges, right? It's dull and lifeless, reading and lectures, uh, confusing math is dangerous equipment, and nobody really likes talking about physics. So, uh, you know, I want to share my six favorite resources for studying physics, things that make me kind of go back and uh, really go back for more physics uh, continuously. And uh, the first thing is basically picture books and flip rama It's much more interesting to see pictures when we're studying physics than it is to see like equations and words and stuff. So let's go and take a look at the first book. It's actually the physics book. This book is pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> it really makes me want to like uh, read everything that's that's inside of it. They have a whole, a whole bunch of different um, versions for like uh, different topics. But we're going to just check the introduction here, the, uh, the table of contents. So they have like measurement of motion and they kind of like have these strange examples of uh, different uh, things that happen, like uh, minute parts of the matter, uh, destruction of forces, oscillations everywhere. And then they talk about the actual topics, so like free falling, um, pressure, conservation of energy. And so there's a couple of different chapters here, and they go pretty far. But you can see it's like really kind of like a lot of images. And here's like page one, they talk about uh, ancient civilizations and stuff, and how the, the units and measurements. So this is a really, really cool book. Um, and then they start going further into the uh, history of like uh, Greek cultures and stuff, Aristotle, and then um, how they started to uh, discover more and more physics over time, Pythagoras. And, uh, this is a really, really cool book and um, definitely worth checking out for a beginning. So, yeah, a little sample. So that's the first book. And the second book uh, that I think is really good for I know it's not really necessarily for beginners, but it's uh, it's sort of beginner quantum mechanics in a sense, because what you can do, and this is really cool, uh, if you know a little bit about quantum mechanics, if you want to learn a little bit about it without getting too much into the math, you can actually just look mainly at these pictures. So they have these pictures in here. You can kind of get a, more of an intuition about what quantum mechanics is really all about. It's about like combinations of different waves and stuff. And so... This book is just packed full of, and the equations aren't too bad because they have a really nice just outline here. Everything's really well explained, and uh, and then they have diagrams immediately, and the chapters are all well outlined in this way. And so uh, this is a really cool um, book as well. See, they didn't want to really give too much of a sample for this one because it's actually a really, really, really good book that uh, makes you want to kind of just go through all the pictures. You don't even have to look, like read them out. You just kind of look through the pictures and you get a feel for what quantum mechanics is really all about uh, intuitively just by seeing these pictures. You can already kind of get a feel right there. So this is the second book. All right. Well, that was just kind of picture books and flip rama You can kind of flip through the books without having to read them. And that makes, ma makes it so much more interesting, especially if you can really learn. And the next thing is easy topics and walkthroughs. All right, so the next book is uh, OpenStax. It's this OpenStax Physics Volume 1, but uh, the reason I chose this one is because it's really simple. So waves and acoustics, you just got these three topics, of oscillations, waves, and sound, um, and mechanics is really the only thing we're doing. There's um, some fluid mechanics, it's the, the hardest possible thing there. Got some momentum collision, and um, we already sort of went through a little course on this the other day of the first beginning eight topics. So we're kind of um we kind of already went through this book a little bit. You can see if we went to a particular page, um, it would be kind of cool. They got some images here, so you kind of understand you know what we're talking about. And uh, they have uh, more pictures. Everything's really well outlined and kind of realistic things and 
Yeah, so it's kind of nice to sort of see uh, if you want a particular topic, just to kind of see like the images that they do here. Look at that. Really good stuff. So these are some great at work problems here. Great resources. They also have chapter review things. So they have a lot of questions over here. And uh, that's actually kind of the thing about the next book. Is that uh, like say you wanted to like figure out some of these questions. And then maybe they might have some answers in the back here, the audience. But really what the key is, is the next book here. Is that you want to be reading solution guides, all right? And the open this is just the OpenStack solution manual for the book we were just looking at, the Physics One. I think it actually has all three physics books. But the idea is you gotta go through this, and you'll just see uh, some of these. Um, where did some of these? You'll see some of these cool questions and how they like solve the solutions. So they actually give you the question first, and then they just kind of solve it for you really nicely in front of you like this. It's really worked out. And again, I sort of explained how you want to be reading this, but you kind of flip through it, and then you try to recognize whether you know the equations that they're using, and you try to recognize the patterns that uh, that you notice, like how we're solving this, try to look at the graphs, and these are pretty easy questions, so let's go maybe to some harder stuff. And something really cool like this, I don't know. Um, I think you just kind of see, they're setting up force diagrams, how you want to do that, really understand this stuff. And it's not really all that, uh, Interesting, but that's why it's you want to just flip through it and just look at the pictures and just see if you recognize the equations. If you don't recognize it, put it down on your cheat sheet. And uh, and if not, just kind of keep flipping through it. It's kind of cool. So you kind of build up your skills of learn of reading math quickly. It's important to be able to read math quickly. You don't want to just sit there and, and stare at an equation for a long time, you know, being able to figure out what it's what it's saying. So you can flip through these things by and, and increase your speed reading for math. Okay, so that was kind of uh, level two here. Well, the third problem is that nobody really likes talking about physics. And um, yeah, this is kind of a little bit of an issue. And so that's why, you know, hey, you know, we could talk to famous scientists. We could try to meet more famous uh, or, or people we kind of already top level in the field. Or we could even just speak to the AI because the AI is really, really smart. It has a lot of, um, a lot of good stuff. So let's go and see we can do about that. The next book here is Stephen Hawking's book. A lot of the famous scientists have famous books. Um, and this one is The Universe in a Nutshell. I think this one is a really good one. Because if we go down, <laughs> poor guy, basically uh, it has uh, it has uh, pictures. Really good ones too. So you can see how we're putting all these like different topics, black holes, super strings, uh, multi-dimensional membranes, general relativity, quantum mechanics, M theory, key brains, and dimensional supergravity, all into this little nutshell here. And it's actually not gonna be too crazy if we just start with some simple stuff here, get some nice pictures of diagrams and all these um, initial experiments they did to try to figure out what the world was all about. So this is really cool too, as you can see. Um, this is Stephen Hawking's book, and <laughs> he's even got some um, modern day video game stuff uh, so yeah he didn't, he didn't, we didn't want to put too much uh, previews in here but these are all really really nice books that um you know will help you get more into physics without too much math and uh, with just a little bit more fun and the final one which is actually probably the best resource for us all is ChatGPT. so we type in physics equations uh, basics um you know we can we can just get to so immediately some simple equations written for us. We've already covered a lot of these before, so you should be getting a little bit more familiar with these. You can get into some more advanced stuff, like thermodynamics if you want to. But essentially, the robot kind of knows everything, and he can explain it in a way that's really, really simple. Okay, so let's, uh, let's show me time dilation. Now you can even ask it for images and stuff. So ChatGPT is a really good resource for studying physics. I know that a lot of um, the time we think that it might be wrong or that um, this is exactly what time dilation is all about. See, the thing is it just kind of has an idea of what things are supposed to look like. And it's not like perfect, but it, it didn't give us any wrong equations here. 
okay, maybe if we ask it to solve some problems that are really hard, it might not get the right answers in the problem. But what it might be able to do is it might be able to show some, show some, show some examples. Show example of how to solve time dilation. So then, you know, he sets up a little equation. And here's an example problem. And sometimes, again, it does get these samples that it gives you wrong. But it's not really the point of knowing the answer is right or wrong. It's more about how you do it. So first they show you that you got to take the known values and substitute. They're literally explaining where I was saying this is kind of like the process of how to solve problems. You know, figure out the known values and plug them into the equation you're given. Then calculate a very specific piece of that equation. Maybe, maybe um, simplify things a little bit, and then you could solve for your given value. All right. So uh, yeah, ChatGPT is a nice little thing that we can use um, for all sorts of things. And the, the cool thing is, it just knows about all the topics, so it's something that you can actually talk to it about <laughs> anything, and it's not going to like a uh, judge you you know a lot of other people if you uh, talk to them about physics they won't um they won't really listen or want to talk about it <laughs> all right so if we go through all that essentially we'll be discovering the archives of physical science and uh, this is what fascinates me about physics is that there's a lot of really cool books and topics and and it's just kind of fascinating so uh, i have one more bonus resource that um that can help you stay organized as you're learning physics. And that's the physics formula sheet. So it's a free download. It's essentially a complete guide. It'll save some time. It's just an efficient review of the topics we were discussing. It's a little uh, cheat sheet formula sheet. And you can just download it at physicsformulasheet.com. And you can upgrade to get the nuclear, the nuclear physics or the nuclear astrophysics chapter that actually uh, is, uh, or I think it's just the nuclear physics chapter. You have to get the, the nuclear astrophysics uh, a little bit differently. But it does have a nuclear physics chapter if you upgrade it to uh, to that. So this is some really um, fun stuff. And this is from my dark physics book, which is coming out soon. Uh, so I think it's going to be a really cool chapter. Anyways, thank you for watching, you guys. Enjoy and uh, check out the mechanical uh, physics cheat sheet. <laughs> have fun.